In addition to the red jack is one of the most quintessential ways to identify a scout or scouter, the next most obvious might be the campaign hat, or as many refer to it, the brown round. Learn about the origins of this historic piece of scouting headgear and check out a couple of special campaign hats we have in the collection of the National Scouting Museum on this edition of Artifact of the Week. The campaign hat. It's also known as a Smokey the Bear hat, a drill sergeant's hat, or on very rare occasions it's simply called a Stetson, but we'll talk about that more in a moment. It's a broad brimmed felt or straw hat where the crown is pinched symmetrically together and comes to a point in the middle. Again, more on that as well. So how did the campaign hat come about? Well, back in the 1840s, mounted U.S. Army soldiers serving in the western part of the United States wanted a more practical hat that would protect them from the elements better than the official headgear issued by the Army. So they started to wear civilian hats to meet their needs. Now, most of these hats were essentially unstructured and were made of animal skins, felt, or some other cloth-like material. After observing the sombrero-style hats worn by the Mexican cowboys they encountered, the soldiers started to put a crease in the center of the crown of their hats. Now, while these hats may have been better than what the Army issued, they were still less than ideal. Then in 1865, John Batterson Stetson, the 25-year-old sickly son of a New Jersey hat maker, traveled out west to help deal with the symptoms of his tuberculosis. Now, when he arrived west of the Mississippi, he was impressed by the cattle drives, the cowboys, the rustlers, and of course, the wildness of the wilderness he was encountering. But there was one thing that did not impress him at all, and that was the hats that everyone seemed to be wearing. Stetson saw them as worse than useless. For example, the derby he brought with him, it just couldn't hold up to the harsh weather conditions. Hats made of beaver pelts were impractical and would become infested with insects like fleas and ticks, and coonskin caps didn't keep your head dry when it rained. Stetson decided to do something about the problem and set about designing a new type of hat with a wide brim and a high crown. As soon as Stetson donned his hat the very first time, he ran across a mule skinner who offered him a $5 gold coin to buy it. Stetson sold him the hat and immediately returned back east to Philadelphia, where he started the John B. Stetson Company with $100 of capital and began mass producing his signature hat. The hat was an instant success, and despite its high price, literally a month's wages for the average cowboy, it became the hat of choice from St. Louis to San Francisco. The new hat had substance and structure, allowing it to be shaped as each wearer desired. Because of these qualities, and because the hat gave the appearance of the wearer being in charge of something very important, Stetson named his new hat Boss of the Plains. But it quickly became known as simply the cowboy hat. These Stetson hats became part of the U.S. Army uniform and became known as campaign hats after the 1872 to 1876 regulations, which introduced a black felt hat for use in the field when ceremonial headgear was inappropriate. The Army version of the Stetson campaign hat was not quite as rigid as the civilian version of the Stetson and started to be adorned with hat bands and braid, braided cords to indicate rank, unit assignment, service history, and even branch of service. During the Spanish-American War, soldiers serving in tropical areas like the Philippines and Cuba discovered that the deep crease in the crown of the cowboy hat would hold rainwater, which would then get dumped on them when they moved their heads. To solve this problem, they started to pinch symmetrically the crown of the point, creating what became known as the Montana Peak style campaign hat. This Montana Peak style of campaign hat was formally accepted into the U.S. Army in September of 1911 and was the field hat of the U.S. Army in World War I. In the 1930s, the soft nature of the Army's campaign hat was replaced with a much stiffer hat with a permanently flat brim. Now step back with me for a moment. An American scout named Frederick Russell Burnham served in the British Army as the Chief of Scouts in the 1890s. baden Pole met Burnham in Africa during the Second Matabili War when he befriended Burnham and Burnham introduced BP to the ways and methods of the indigenous peoples of the Americas and taught him woodcraft and scouting skills. BP admired the Stetson campaign hat and neckerchief that Burnham wore and began to wear them himself. 
In fact, he preferred the campaign hats so much that he ordered 10,000 of them for the British troops he commanded as part of the South African Constibulary, and among them were 1,200 Canadian troops that became the first to wear the campaign hat as part of their official uniform. Upon his return to England following his victory at Maeve King, the Stetson campaign hat had become a bit of a calling card for BP. When BP was designing the uniform for his envisioned scouting movement, he drew upon his time in South Africa, designing a uniform similar to the uniform of the constibulary and including the campaign hat as it had proven its form and function to him already. When scouting came to the United States in 1910, the new BSA uniform looked very much like the uniform of the British Scouting Association, including the campaign hat. On display with the first Eagle Scout medal here at the National Scouting Museum, you can see a 1910 high crown campaign hat. This hat was produced by the Eisner Company and features star-shaped vent holes on the sides of the hat. On the inside sweatband is the English Florida Lee. The next hat in the collection and on display here at the museum is the high crown campaign hat that was produced from 1911 to 1920 by the Eisner Company. The inside band still has the English Florida Lee and there is a plain brown silk hat band on the outside of the hat. Now the 1920s saw a couple of changes to the BSA campaign hat. Most notable is the transformation from the high crown to a low crown design. Also the first class emblem appears on the inside band. The 1920s also saw the introduction of the Scoutmaster's campaign hat, which features a leather hat band. Prior to this, scouters would repurpose military campaign hats or purchase BSA youth campaign hats to wear. The new leader's campaign hat sold for $4.50, shipping included. In 1928, a new version of the campaign hat was introduced by the Eisner Company. This hat is a low crown design and is the first class emblem appears on the brown silk hat band. The final campaign hat we would like to present is this very special Stetson wide brim campaign hat that belonged to Baden Pole himself. We now we know this is BP's campaign hat because the leather sweatband is inscribed in gold leaf, specially manufactured for Colonel RSS Baden Pole. We can also see this distinctive external leather band in many photos of BP during his time as Inspector General of the Cavalry for the British Army and as a Chief Scout of the World, such as this photograph here. Now BP's Stetson campaign hat is on loan to the National Scouting Museum by Utah Scouter Daniel Eglin with the Museum of Scouting History. BP's campaign hat has been on display at the Scouting Heritage Gallery at the Summit Beckville Reserve since the 2019 World Jamboree. It will now be on display here at the National Scouting Museum as part of our major upgrade and can be seen in the Scouting Heritage Gallery beginning of June of 2023. While campaign hats continue to be a part of the scouting uniform around the world, they can also be found covering the heads of drill sergeants or drill instructors with the Army, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. Though the official headgear of many law enforcement agencies around the country, including the U.S. Border Patrol. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police still wear the campaign hat as part of their official dress uniform. The New Zealand Army wears the campaign hat as part of their official dress uniform for the Army Band and other specialized units. Of course, Smokey the Bear wears a campaign hat. And maybe one of the most recognized campaign hats still in use today is by the Rangers of the National Park Service. Rangers in the NPS have a tradition of passing down their straw campaign hats from retirees to new Rangers coming into service. It's reported that one particular campaign hat was passed along more than 45 times until it was finally retired from service. According to one Park Service Ranger, seeing this hat tells visitors, I'm here and ready to assist you. I think you can say the same thing about any scout or scouter you see wearing their brown round at any scouting event. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Join us next time as we continue to learn more about the history of the BSA through the collection of the National Scouting Museum and Artifact of the Week.